And we're back with more of the Pope on film. Yes. If you're like me, and I know I am, you are no doubt a big fan of this podcast, the Pope on film. I mean, who is it? The Pope on film is the world's greatest podcast that no one has ever heard of. This is the truth. When it comes to all of the podcasts out there that no one has ever heard of, we're number one. So, uh, boom. That is it. Uh, yeah. But only the real fans, the true hardcore fans that have been with us since the beginning. Uh, this is episode 453. So we have done 452 episodes before this one, of course. That's just basic math. and. As everyone knows, we have always done this podcast two weeks apart. So when we started this podcast back in 2002, uh, Bunny and I were on the same uh, BBS in the yes. same uh, AOL chat room. And Bunny was thinking of a way for us to deal with our grief regarding 9-11. And then I said, I've got an idea, a 2002 idea podcasting and he said what's that and i said i don't know but let's start doing it and now here we are that's right yeah uh only the true hardcore the, fans that have been with us crowd loves us yeah uh only the real fans know the two basic facts about the both of us the two undeniably really real and in no way made up on the spot possibly by one of my kids, wink, wink, uh, facts about the both of us, America's hottest podcasting couple. And when I say podcasting couple, I mean that Bunny and I are very close and that sometimes we say that we love each other. We are not married. No. Despite what some people might think online, I am married to Natasha, who is my wife. I am not married to Bunny. Just want to make that clear. No. Uh, and and, and I am, wanted to, and I am with Jeannie over here. Yeah, I will say, Bunny did want to marry me, but Natasha put a ring on it, so Bunny just and missed and out. she won Thunderdome fair and square. I mean, you know, nice. I think the chainsaw was a bit excessive, but you know, it is Thunderdome. You know. Thunderdome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's Jeannie. Hi, Jeannie. Uh, it, the Twitch stream is a little bit late. Uh, okay, the two facts. Undeniably really real and in no way made up on the spot, possibly by one of my kids because I didn't want to write it. Facts about the both of us, America's hottest podcasting couple, Bunny and Mei Lin. First and foremost, Bunny, is the first fact, which is about you is the fact that when you're not recording the podcast, you are, in fact, a professional pooper. Now, I didn't know that you could make money from pooping, so tell us, Bunny. The fans want to know, how does that work? How do you make money on it? What do you call yourself? Like a, like a person who works at a zoo is a zoologist. What do you call yourself, and, and, and how do you make money on it? Well, technically, what I call myself is a rectal sculptor. Uh, nice. Yes. <laughs> kind of like a sandwich artist. Through, through many, many years of practice, I, I can control my sphincter to the point where I can make Abe Lincoln bookcases, books, book ends out of my own poop. That's impressive. And then, and then, of course, you know, then I sell them on Etsy. You know, that's how you make yeah. the money. Yeah. Etsy Etsy-ing is where you really make bubble. that, bring that cash in. Yeah. Uh, and the second fact, which is about me, is that I'm a lover of history. I love it, but I'm also a storyteller. So, this is the part of the podcast, Act Two, where we get educational. 
where I get a story from the history books and maybe reword it a little bit to match my own unique storytelling razzmatazz. And that is what this is. Another educationally uneducational installment of historic approximations, or as we like to call it, And for those of you playing along at home, this segment is spelled capital H, capital A, but small p. That is vitally important. We need a small p that's crucial to the whole ebb and flow of the podcast. And to be clear, this segment for years was known as Steve's Historic Approximations, or SHAP, as we like to call it, repeatedly, annoyingly, whether anyone wanted us to or not. However, um, uh, a dead name is dead for a reason. That name was uh, so 2000 and late, whereas yeah. Maylin is so 3000 and eight. So we are moving on. Once again, today is indeed a very special hap. It is the third and final chapter of our trilogy of history. For the last two episodes, we have been using our superior knowledge of the U.S. presidents, and going through each and every president, telling you, the audience, some little-known facts about, by and large, a bunch of corrupt, old, white war criminals. Hooray! Hooray! The first episode, we covered Presidents 1 through 21. That was uh, George Washington? I think is how he pronounces his name. I don't know. Not too many people remember him. George Wash Washington. Uh, and then to number 21, Chester, comma, and Arthur. The A in the middle stood for Anne. Because he yes. was an Arthur. And then in our last episode, we did Presidents 22. 22 was Grover Cleveland. That's why I was mentioning Howard the Duck. Whenever I see the name Cleveland, I pronounce it like Howard the Duck. So I have Howard the Duck on the brain because we're going through the president. Who, Two, also my favorite Muppet. Yes, okay. Grover Cleveland. Right. Super Grover Cleveland. We, we were deprived. And, we did not have Elmo yet. Yeah. Elmo Nixon. Uh, so uh, last episode we did presidents number 22 to 37 number 37 was richie nixon uh he he liked to be called richie nick because he was a big stevie nicks fan yes he was so yes, he was he could he, do all the he, moves and everything yeah yeah richard nixon could work a scarf yeah so many so many scarves that's how that's how he got his start. Johnny Depp saw Stevie Nicks on stage and said, "What if instead of one scarf, it was twelve? And then he did a shit ton of cocaine and decided to be an actor. Yes, there you go. So, so you saying us- are you suggesting he had the scarves first? Uh... Yes, scarves first, acting second. Okay. You know who I learned that from? Sir John Gielgud. Uh-huh. So, there you go. So, it's factual. So, that brings us more or less to the more recent presidential presidents. So, this week, the shocking conclusion, shown with no commercial interruptions. Presidents number 38 to 46. Let's do this. Can you please pull up President? Okay, so right now we've got President 37. Richie Nixon. Uh, so he was a he was a big time president. He had Nixon now more than ever. Nixon now more than ever. More than ever. We need Nixon now. That was his uh, campaign song. So Richard Nixon, he was forced out of office. Do you know why he was forced out of office, Bunny? Let me tell you. 
he went after Black Dynamite. Yes, he did. And that's something that you don't do. No. You don't go against Black Dynamite. Uh, he declared war on anyone who sells drugs to the community. That's right. But Black Dynamite, I sell drugs to the community. God, what a wonderful movie that is. <laughs> so good. So then they got Richie Nix out. And um, every once in a while, they'll do this thing in politics where it's like, uh, okay, we got rid of the president. We need someone else. Uh, oh, I know. We'll get the vice president. The vice president is. Oh, shoot. What's the name of the vice president? Such an important job. And the people who are vice president do so much. Let me just. Harrison Ford. No. Well, 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 but really, we. We had Nixon and we had Spiro Agnew as his vice president. Yeah. And Spiro Agnew fell first. Yeah. So Nixon then had to appoint another vice president. Where they looked, I do not know, to have found Gerald Ford. Stuck him in the his position. Head, and and his head is in the perfect shape of a Mexican jumping bee. Yes. Gerald Ford. The reason I think Gerald Ford is the first president of our modern era, I would say, because he was the first Saturday Night Live president. And Saturday Night Live gave him the reputation of being a bumbler, a stumbler, somebody who trips. This was Chevy Chase's whole fucking bit. But literally, this is the only man who literally just tripped into the fucking presidency. Yeah. Yeah. You know what you know what this guy reminds me of? Nobody voted for him. Nobody knew who he was. <laughs> you know what I always loved about him, about uh Gerald Ford? You remember that weird period in time when they were making a bunch of movies stuck. You froze. Starring thumbs. Someone's thumb and then animate a face over it. Right. And the thumb would be acting. He was our first thumb president. Yes, he was. That is, he is a giant thumb. He is literally, look at his face. His face is the entire body of a minion. <laughs> if you just got his face and you painted it yellow, he was our second minion president. There was another minion president that we had. I don't remember his name, but if you just painted his head yellow and then put some overalls yes. on him, he would be a minion. Yes, he would. Period. So that is uh, Gerald Ford. Let's move on to number 39. So Gerald Ford left and then in came number 39 uh jimmy carter jimmy he jimmy was, carter he was the first president to also be in a steve martin movie which is a really big deal yes because yeah abraham lincoln okay what did you do read the slaves okay were you in a movie with Steve Martin, though? No, you were not. You were shot in a theater, but you know who wasn't in that theater? Steve Martin. Sorry. Uh, Jimmy Carter was an odd one. Jimmy Carter was an odd one. First, he had us all really kind of nervous being like the first like really professed 
born again Christian candidate, yeah. you know? And then, yeah. of course, y you go to an interview in, in Playboy magazine telling people how you've lost it in your heart. We, we don't care, Jimmy. We that don't care. Weird. He was also a peanut. Yes. He was a literal peanut. Yes. Not a lot of people know that. But he turned out better than most, and of course the Republicans ha hammered him. And then once he once he lost the presidency, he said, I am now going to devote the rest of my life to building homeless people. Yes. And he would just go from town to town building with a hammer and nails, building homeless people. Yes. Which I thought was very nice. Uh... He Whoa. was our first and really only, he was our only uh, John Denver president. Yeah. I think and he I was the last president who gave a that, shit. But that is exactly Jimmy Carter. Yeah. He was our first and only Whole Foods president. Yes. He was the only president I could think of that if he went to talk to you, he would put his chair around backwards. <laughs> yes. He didn't have fireside chats. He, he had fireside hangs. Yeah. Where he'd turn his presidential chair around and go, hey, fellas, I just wanted to wrap a chuck. Uh, I think abstinence totally rocks. That's the closest I'm going to get to a Jimmy Carter to a Jimmy Carter uh, accent. Not, not, not bad. Not bad. It was all right. It was all right. So let's move on to number 40. Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan. The actor. Man, the... what a horrible idea that was. Let's make sure to never again... Uh, hire someone who's just famous because they were on movies and TV shows. Yeah. Let's never make that mistake again. Yeah. My favorite thing, my favorite thing about Ronald Reagan was that he was shot at and he almost died, but he didn't. So he came out and said, well, uh, I'm Ronald Reagan and I am, am banning all assault weapons. And Republicans went, yes. Yes, a ban on assault weapons. What a great idea, Mr. President. We love this idea and we'll never turn against it. Why should everyone have assault weapons? Yes, let us ban them. I am so happy that we Republicans are passing this gun legislation. We won't forget that this happened. We <laughs> support you. <coughs> Let ev we'll let everyone in America remember that when you think Reagan, you think sensible measures to protect people from guns. We Republican Christians will never forget it. Yeah. Hooray, Ronald Reagan. It's fascinating how much, uh, now that you mention it, how much when I look, look at Ronald Reagan, I picture... Freaking Eddie Murphy is Gumby. <laughs> you know, it's so fascinating how pop culture makes you think about presidents. That when I think of Ronald Reagan, I think of Joe Piscopo, I think of Eddie Murphy as Gumby, and I think of Michael J. Fox. Yeah. Yeah. That's fascinating. Oh, and, and by the way, Dan Aykroyd was, was Jimmy Carter. Dan Aykroyd was Jimmy Carter. Carter. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, our next president, number 41, George H.W. Bush. The only good thing about George Bush was uh, we gave uh, we gave uh, Garth a pretty decent amount of work. Well, well, okay. So let's just go back here a second, okay? So we have an actor 
who dabbled in politics a little bit, okay? But mostly an actor who, as vice president, has the former head of the CIA... So he, right. who who exactly is really running things? Yeah, uh, I'd you can say the exact same thing about George W. Bush. Yeah. So, like, George Bush was never our president, J- just period. So George H. W. Bush, Dana Carvey, Dana Carvey, every once in a while. America goes, I don't know, just fucking make the vice president the president. And so he was, George H.W. Bush was, in our modern times, to use the parlance of the young people, George H.W. Bush was our most mid-president. He didn't do anything shocking. No. He didn't do anything... He didn't do nothing. He didn't do everything. He wasn't loved. The the only good thing that I can remember George H.W. Bush doing is vomiting on like a Japanese emperor or something. Yes. Which was was fun. Good for you. Which was fun. But but that's why we had Dan Quayle. Because yeah. Dan Quayle would take all of the heat off of him. So every time something was like really going on in the country, like invading Nicaragua and taking Noriega out and arresting him, Dan Quayle would go do something stupid. And we would talk about Dan Quayle and the stupid thing he did. It's, pretty so, much, so, uh, pretty much, pretty much, where we are now. Except, like everything's at now. Kind of like uh so uh, in everything's a distraction in, in, of a distraction. <laughs> in British terms, um, George H. W. Bush got Dan Quayle to be his vice president, so Dan Quayle could Boris Johnson the country. Yeah. I am a complete idiot, and I'm doing horrible things, but also, look how silly I am. Yeah. 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 So, George H.W. Bush, our our most boring president. He was our first president who was also a Pez dispenser. Yes. Yes, he was. Because you look at that. Look at that. He looks like his teeth are made of Tic Tacs. He had Tic Tac teeth. They used to call him that old Tic Tac teeth. That was the official nickname for he had a jar of Tic Tacs. After after Ronald Reagan, every president had to become obsessed with a candy and have a jar of it at their desk. So let's go through the different presidents. Okay, so after Reagan was George H.W. Bush. His favorite candy was uh, Tic Tac, so he had a jar of Tic Tacs. After that was Bill Clinton. His favorite uh, candy was Roofies, so he had a jar of Roofies on his desk. George Uh W. Bush's favorite candy was whatever, uh, sharp, shiny things, like a baby, like a a one-year-old. So George W. Bush was the first president where uh, they had to baby-proof the White House. Yes. Yeah, let's move on to 43, George. No, uh, 42. 42. Uh, William Jefferson Clinton. Is that his middle name? I is, think was so. Was that his middle name? I, yeah, William Jefferson Clinton. Okay, I was just guessing. But, I mean, it, when it comes to white people, it, it, there are only so many names that you can guess. So, uh, where are we? Um. I'm so hyped. Bill Clinton. He was a walking, talking, saxophone playing sexual harassment lawsuit. Yes, he was. His hair was just a Brillo pad. 
when Hillary needed to wash the White House dishes, she would just pick up her his head and just rub her his head against the dirty dishes. He was like if Patrick Starr liked smelling women's hair. Yes. I never liked Bill Clinton. I liked the fact that he was our first president to be like, hey, we need we 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 care about health. We care about uh the environment. We care about our kids growing up to be healthy. Now I'm gonna eat three hundred dollars worth of McDonald's food in one sitting. And and he would just he you would see him on the campaign trail which was just his excuse to go to different restaurants and eat a shit ton of food. He didn't seem that healthy. No. And also, uh, of course he's not healthy. What with all of the cigars? Well, at least the ones that he smoked. Yes. Because he didn't smoke all of the cigars. Yeah. He saved some other ones for special time. Yes. And the problem was, the problem was, is that, you know, poor Monica Lewinsky just happened to have been there. He was trapped in the White House. He would much prefer picking up a nice, attractive woman from one of the local bowling alleys. He's definitely, Bill Clinton is definitely our first president to go to a bar to pick up a woman to be unsuccessful and then when it's time for last call, getting whatever's left over. Yes. He was our first bar skank president. (laughs) He was our first president where you could it wasn't beyond the realm of possibilities that he had an 8-track tape of Creedence Clearwater in his uh Buick LeSabre. Yeah. So, um, it, it, I, I've never liked Bill Clinton. I've never liked the Clintons. And, and, and oh, the Republicans love attacking Bill and Hillary Clinton. It's like, I don't like either of them either. So, I there you I go. I shook, like, don't care. I shook Bill Clinton's hand. Personally. Me. What did you say? I shook Bill Clinton's hand. Nice. The, I shook John Mc, John McCain's at, hand at the once. park in Yelm, Washington. Yelm. Yes. Yelm. And the school there, the one of the elementary schools. The music teacher wrote the song. Um, it takes a village, and that's where that whole thing came from. It takes a village. Huh. Yeah. I would like to go to the that? to Yelm, and then wherever I found the sign Yelm, I would add an O. Yelmo. So now it's so now it's Yelmo. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's what that's what Yelmo says. Yelmo. <laughs> that's what Yelmo says. So let's move on to number 43, our 43rd president, commander in chief of the United States of America, Dick Cheney. (laughs) Look between those eyes. Look between those eyes. You know what you see? Nothing. No. There's nothing behind those eyes. Nothing between those eyes. That man was more of a puppet than Kermit the Frog. Yes. He also, just looking at him, he looks Muppety. He does. He does look very Muppety. George W. Bush looks like a Muppet of George W. Bush. (laughs) He was our first caricature president. And that's fascinating. I blame George W. Bush for Ten Facebook. minute warning. Okay. I blame George W. Bush for Facebook. Yeah. Because George W. Bush said, okay, well, yes, 9-11 happened and it's really bad and it sucks and uh, I'm sorry. Uh, so we can stop it from happening again 
The only problem is uh, no one will ever have privacy again. But we can stop terrorism. So we're going to stop terrorism. None of you have privacy anymore. And all of the patriots said, well, who needs privacy? Take away all of my freedom. And so, and now Facebook knows more about us than we do. And it's all George W. Bush's fault. Right there. That man started it. Your computer accepting cookies. This man started it. Yes. Oh, I downloaded this app on my phone. Oh, look, it's actually a Chinese app and it's spying on you. This guy right here. <laughs> this man. It's all his fault. Number 44, our 44th president, Barack Obama, he was our one and only cool president. Well, I mean, him and James Buchanan, am I right? Right. I, 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 and yes, he certainly was cool. Okay. But in the, in the world of Obama worship, can we not forget the drone strikes? Can we not forget drone striking American citizens? I, and can, I, can I we know. not forget continuing, uh, Afghanistan? I know that Obama did a bunch of really horrible things and he killed a lot of people. Mr. Drone Strikes and Mr. Deportation. He deported my favorite rapper, MF Doom. And yes. uh, I know we did horrible things, but that no, he was, he was dinner, cool. That and the point was, and the point is, this is the good president. Yeah, yeah. That correspondence dinner he did where he showed up with Keegan-Michael Key as Luther, his anger translator. Yes. Oh, I love that. That was a so good bit. Much. I, that, that is so good. And then we move on to number 45, our 45th president of the United States from January 20th, 2017 to January 20th, 2021. It's fuckface Von Dumbass and his vice president, Davy from Davy and Goliath. They, Donald Trump wanted Goliath, but he was put down decades ago. Yes. So they got Davy instead. And 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 sometimes, like uh, something horrible would happen, and uh, uh, Mike Pence would turn to Donald Trump and said, "Gee, Donald, do you think it was God?" <laughs> just like that so uh kudos to don it, i i'm just gonna come out i'm just gonna come out and say it donald trump and elon musk are american heroes because they are doing such a service to america they are teaching people hey just because someone has money doesn't mean they're smart just like how Ben Carson is a great American hero for teaching all of us, just because I am a doctor doesn't mean I'm intelligent. Yes. So these people are all heroes. And Donald Trump is a hero. And everyone's like, oh, man, Donald Trump is the worst. And I'm like, really? I, I, I am shocked. Who would have thought that um, having our president also be a uh, WWE Hall of Fame inductee would be a bad idea. Oh, but all of a sudden, I, I just became gripped with fear. Like, what happened to Ben Carson? Is he still running something somewhere? Did we just kind of forget about him? No, he's going from town to town, getting into adventures like Kane from Kung Fu. <laughs> Meeting people, getting into adventures. <laughs> Donald Trump, what a piece of shit this guy is. Uh, so then, uh, number 46. Let's get to this before we get cut off by Zoom. Number 46, our current president from January 20th, 2021 to now. Oh, did you know, buddy? You know how make a wish makes wishes come true for little kids who are about to die yeah 
Now they're doing it for really old people. Yeah. Yay. People who are inches away from death. Yay. And it's like, oh, grand, great, great grandpa Joe, you're about to die. What would you like to do? And Joe said, oh, your grandpa Joe just wants one thing and one thing only. Go into Willy Wonka's factory. Then I would get out of this bed and dance. But uh, then they said, oh, uh, Willy Wonka isn't real. How about being president? He said, sure, whatever. It yeah. doesn't matter. I'm going to die soon anyway. And well, here you he, go. But he first, taught, make a wish, president. Yes, He has taught us a, a, a lot of important things. He has taught us that saying... Poor children are just as as smart as white children is a stutter. Yeah, he said that. He said that. That's yeah. a stutter. That's trying to call one of your administrative aides onto the stage having forgotten that they died. That's a stutter. Yeah. Okay. He taught us a lot about stuttering where I always thought it was just a speech impediment. It's... The inability to put on a jacket is a stutter. The thing is, is that being a liberal, being a Democrat means that you can either vote for a horrible candidate or fascism. And it's like, okay, I... Yeah. I, of course, am against fascism, but do I have to vote for this person? Yeah. Well, I guess I'm between a rock and a hard place. I will choose this person only because it's nerf or nothing. It's this horrible person. Yeah. Or concentration camps. I'm going to choose the horrible person, but like, yeah, can we that's... just stop... Yeah, that's where that's where we're stuck. We're stuck between voting for somebody who isn't going to do a fucking thing for us as opposed to the ones who will actively hurt us. Yeah. It's a bit and it's, that's it's it. just so, ridiculous. So yeah, we're going to vote for the guy who who isn't going to do anything for us again. I voted again. for Hillary but sooner Clinton. Sooner or later, we're going to roll craps on that, and we're going to get the guy who's going to actively hurt us because no, nobody's doing anything to stop them. Uh, I voted for Hillary Clinton, but only because I liked the idea of us having two presidents that have had sex with each other. <laughs> because true, true. Warren G. Harding and Woodrow Wilson, they just masturbated together. Yes. There was no penetration. So, uh, oh, and let's not forget uh, Eisenhower and Truman. Hello. Uh, but I liked the idea of like, oh, hey, our 45th president banged our 42nd president. And hell, maybe our 40th too. I don't know. Uh, see, so, if, 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 if that was part of the slogan... If that was one of the part of the campaign, she would have fucking won. Yeah. So that has been our three part look at American presidents. And I hope you all learned something. Next episode, we're going to go back to our normal stories, or maybe I'll find some other thing that we can do. Because this has been fun. Three episodes. This has been a blast. I had fun doing this. So I'll see if we can do it again for some other thing. I don't want to do vice presidents because that's lame, but we'll see. But join us next time for more educationally uneducational fun with historic approximations and cut on that. <laughs>